Cartoons are great at providing some much needed good vibes, but they can also provide an abundance of fashion and style inspiration if the characters are well designed. Gear up because it's adventure time. Hola, my name is X and I like to experiment with fashion as well as talk about whatever the hell I want on social media whenever I feel like it. And in this video, I hope you're packed because we're going to venture into the magical land of Ooh, visit a few of our favorite characters and see what kind of fashion and style archetypes and vibes we can cultivate through our journey. This was an interesting suggestion from a regular viewer and I've been itching to get into some fashion mood boards anyway. So let's go ahead and move into the agenda so I can elaborate on what we're going to cover. First things first, we're going to start with some relevant context around Adventure Time. I've always done a little research like this anyway, but people really dig this section just to help orient us and set the stage for the fashion style discussion that's going to be had. Then from there, we're going to move into some fashion mood boards for some of the characters. Mind you, these mood boards are AI generated. They're merely meant to serve as visual aids for our style and fashion exploration. Very similar to what I did in a Yu Yu Hakushu video. It went over pretty well. I'm excited about it, I hope you are too. But really the main juicy part of this video is gonna revolve around Marceline and Princess Bubblegum because they provide us with a wide range of outfits throughout the course of the main Adventure Time series. We're gonna take a quick look at mood boards for each of them as well but we're really just going to go through my top favorite outfits for them as well as allude to some of that style expansion in some recent installments agenda set. Now let's get into some relevant context around the Adventure Time series. Adventure Time was created by Pendleton Ward and debuted in the year 2010. The series concluded in 2018 after 10 seasons, which is an incredible run. It just goes to show how much of a demand for the series there was amongst a pretty loyal fan base. And the legacy continues with spin-off series like Distant Lands, Fiona and Cake, as well as comic books, merchandise, I mean you name it. That legacy has naturally translated to to plenty of influence and acclaim amongst the general population with it influencing pop culture with like memes, jokes, and obviously imprinting upon many people's childhoods. And as I'll touch on in a moment, this series is so rich and deep that it's won awards like Emmys. I mean, that's a huge deal. Praising it for its storytelling, emotional depth, and creativity. Speaking of creativity, Adventure Time has a really unique style about its animation. It definitely stands out. I remember thinking it was such a breath of fresh air. And with it being so fantastical and open to some artistic innovation, there's even some episodes that get a little experimental and kind of push us out of the box with design. I think that's an element that we'll get to appreciate when we're looking at some of the outfits for the characters and really unpacking their aesthetics. And on the character front and why why this series was able to win awards is because there is some incredible depth to the characters and development as they grow throughout the course of the series and have these shifting and evolving dynamics with one another. I mean, that's always part of series lore, but it's pretty profound some of the links that they go to convey growth, identity, interpersonal relationships, etc. And all of this takes place within some really imaginative world building with the land of Ooh. There's so many kingdoms, endless with so many surprises, twists and turns, fantastical magical elements. I mean, it's such a deep and unexpected world. And I'm not usually one for lore, but I must say that there's even key events that explain circumstances with regard to the land and how things are in their current state. It's pretty interesting. You should take a look. That was only just a warm up as our adventure continues with us moving into some character fashion mood boards and I'm not covering every single main character from the core Adventure Time series, just some ones that stand out to me and I think lend some diversity to the overall fashion style conversation that we're gonna have in this section. Starting with Finn the human, and that's a good emphasis point because he's the only human within the land of Ooh, and he's a typical, fun, enthusiastic, heroic, and brave main character. He is a little bit naive and inexperienced at first, just like any fledgling hero. But as he encounters all the crazy challenges and places that there are to discover in the land of Ooh, he just becomes so much more courageous and brave and will do anything that it takes to save his friends, the day, whatever it be. But what's great about Finn is his style is just so chill, comfortable, and very approachable. 
he does need to still dress very practically. So having a wardrobe that is very everyday, still enough of a personality to kind of flex some of those aspects, whether in graphics or maybe certain ways of accessorizing. I think we're looking at a lot of like chino pants, cargo pants, same with shorts. We're looking at hoodies and simple tees, but quality items that are good go-tos and staples within any practical casual person's wardrobe. But there also does need to be a layer of utility as someone who dresses like Finn or maybe identifies with Finn does have a little bit of an adventurous angle to themselves. Similar to Finn, we have Jake who is his adoptive brother and just close partner and companion throughout the Adventure Time series. He's also obviously really laid back meshes well with pretty much everybody because he's just a versatile, cool guy that just really wants to get along and have a good vibe. He does have shape-shifting abilities, which lends some versatility to what he can do in the face of danger or just for some simple quirky moments. And so those are some elements that we would want to see reflective in his style that also kind of helps separate him from Finn. So when we look at some style inspiration, or influence that could surround Jake. It's also very down to earth, practical and high utility, but almost with a little bit of a rugged angle, just kind of given the versatility that he has as a character and almost like a Swiss army knife, just kind of need to have a style that's adaptable and kind of can flex up, down, maybe a few different ways. Definitely want to invite more earth tones and just a more organic vibe into his style that again, separates him from Finn who is a little more simplistic and clean and soft. Bimo is a cute little game console accessory character. Definitely brings some cheerful, fun, whimsical vibes to the scene. Bimo is also really helpful and just supportive to the character. So there's also a sense of utility and versatility, very endearing, creative, and fun to say the least. And that sense of whimsy and fun should also translate to some clothes and style to separate Bimo fashion and style from Jake and Finn is something with a bit more of a tech inspired twist, something futuristic just to tie on that game console angle. There's also room for some brighter colors, also some room for that genderless kind of flex either way, and clothes that give a little bit more shape and silhouette and can even lean a little more of the boxier route just to kind of emulate some of that BMO structure. Moving on to Lemon Grab, kind of an obnoxious character, just very socially awkward, focused on authority and just being listened to, control and discipline, complex nonetheless, and has some nuance and redeeming qualities and is on a journey just like everybody else. So there's definitely some interesting components to the character. We obviously want a bit more of a polished and put together and buttoned up style and to not make the overall style feel so militant and flat. We want to incorporate plenty of accessorizing and really just go the business attire route to an extent. But given that it's lemon grab, lemon, we shouldn't be afraid of some pops of color, including yellow which can help balance out some of that rigid, dark, neutral overall foundation for the style and give us a bit more personality as a contrast. Ice King for being a bit more of an antagonistic character actually has a story that I can sympathize with. It's really that crown that drove him crazy and made him the mad Ice King that he is. But originally he was a really sharp guy with a classic style, but his transformation and evolution into the Ice King gave him a bit more rigidity, but also some room to be a bit eccentric and a little out of the box with how his style was. So when we look at some clothing items and overall vibe, it should lean within the classic route, looks and styles that take the character a bit more seriously, but with some statement items that can kind of show that flex in identity and profound royal status that's now been adopted. And when we think of ice, just really the style should be cool, crisp, and timeless but with some items that are innovative and can kind of push the realm and range of style that a more traditionally classic character would probably wear. LSP is a unapologetically true to themselves type character, very sassy and has 
plenty of attitude as we can see from that valley girl accent dramatic and a bit over the top at times but i really think that that's just a means of her really trying to establish her independence her identity and who she is and not letting anybody compromise that for her honestly that's kind of a slay way of approaching life even if it can be a bit obnoxious at times and when we think about how such a bold and unapologetic attitude translates to style she's still a princess so we are gonna have some prissier girly and cute items in the mix but they're not gonna be bu princess bubblegum level of prissy they're gonna be a unique comfortable easy breezy casual form of prissy and girly but also being unapologetic means you don't really care what people think about some of your experimentation with fabrics and textures and silhouettes. Overall, a bright and fun style that isn't afraid to be themselves. And when we look at the Flame Princess, she's struggled like many other characters have with balancing authority while also being more human, for lack of a better way to put it, or just self-aware and more considerate to relationships and interactions and impacts on others. It's kind of largely due to her relationship with Finn that she's able to come upon better qualities like compassion and reason and not just giving into impulses and anger and really kind of thinking things through and just being a bit more regulated and when regulated that style translates to something that is effortlessly chic and very high class she has an incredible gown and that could be emulated in a few different ways with different gowns as well as just polished and luxurious accessories she can also flex casual and anybody who has that kind of fiery bold personality can but there's still elements involved whether it's the makeup the fragrance the accessories that still assert a level of authority and stance within the style that shouldn't be questioned or undermined quick pit stop how did we feel about that because i really want to keep doing that kind of format and style of like mood board exploration for characters across a variety of different media. So I definitely want to hear what you think in the comments. But now that we're groovy with the main cast's fashion style vibes, let's move into the stars of the show with Marceline and Princess Bubblegum. Starting with Marceline, I know that she's definitely a crowd favorite definitely a complex character. She's a vampire queen. She's been around for thousands of years. So that alone can kind of take a toll on anybody's psyche. But also her backstory is a bit tragic. She's had quite a few challenges in her life, which has probably led to her being darker edged character. But as we see, as she gets to know more people, there is a softer, vulnerable, lonelier side to her that is just looking for some companionship, care. I mean, who isn't? We love a rock star, and that is definitely an essence that we can see across a variety of her outfits. Obviously, it's easy to see that she has a bit more of an alternative style, but those red boots are very signature, and I think give her a good staple statement item that not only embodies her character, but allows her to flex and kind of try out some different aesthetics in a unique and novel way. Overall, a darker, gloomier vibe to her aesthetic, but we do get surprised with some kind of cutesier looks as well as some pops of color as far as favorite looks starting at the top we got to acknowledge her core signature look right blue skinny jeans those red boots and some sort of tank top a little punky a little grunge can't go wrong next we have this cute dress with some spikier elements towards the top of the bodice which is nice it's belted which is kind of cute the stockings are fun still muted but a cute little pattern to kind of add a little pop of personality and the shoes are cute too i really love the combo of the sweater and jeans in this look it is giving a little freddy krueger i mean any sort of big striped red and kind of brownish grayish tone is gonna give that i think the flip-flops actually save her i was gonna say that i don't think i like the flip-flops in this but it definitely gives it a different vibe this one's also effortlessly cool and laid back it's also a bit more androgynous 
probably because of the hat. Cool, laid back, chill. This one's obviously a good one. It's reflective of her signature outfit. We're just getting a bit more of a dress in this case, or maybe a longer shirt. I don't know why, I think it's just like the, the neutral brownish tones, but I'm getting like shaggy vibes. She kind of has a groovy energy here. Maybe it's also the long hair, giving a little bit of 70s. Okay, this is one of the first examples of like an oversized shirt that I think just is a really good look for her and breaks her out of some of that darker pant heavy aesthetic. It's a nice bright color, so that's refreshing, but not too obnoxiously bright with also a nice little pop of color in the shoes to complement. I really like the variation of the red boots in this one, a bit chunkier, which is a good contrast to the overall ongoing skinny silhouette of her outfit. Love the casual over the shoulder aspect of the tee and just love the purple and red and black I like this outfit too. It's a little bit lazier just because the tank just seems especially low energy, but the boots are really cool. I'm really digging those and the overall color palette is a nice kind of change. This is, I'd say, top favorite outfit of mine. Loving the over dramatic size of the hat. Again, a nice contrast to her overall super skinny silhouette. Love the high-waisted pants and then just the tall boots and the really cute little modest red top. It all just blends so well together. This one's also a top, top fave. It's just so cutesy and the ponytail hairstyle just makes it feel a little preppier. Loving the color of the sweater. Again, another variation of the red boots that is just so signature and works. And I just love the shorts. It just is kind of sporty, preppy, cute and fun. This outfit is pretty much her signature look just with an oversized sweater and the cat elements are a nice little touch and I like that they are in red just to give a bit more of that cross outfit coordination with the boots. This is also an effortlessly cute and just laid back thrown together look and it's another oversized shirt moment which I think works for her. Even though this outfit is a bit more of like a gym kind of outfit, it's like a sporty moment. It's like, okay, come through sporty vampire queen. She's giving us full range here. Another nice flex that doesn't feel like it falls so out of the realm of her groovy rock star energy. Again, we're getting some staple skinny pants with the red boots. It's sleeveless with a cute little pattern and a pop of color. Another good example of how she can pull off these cutesier, preppier looks, but if the color palette is like muted or it just kind of looks a little maybe unironed even, it really works for her. I love the color. Overalls are such an understated fashion moment and I love that she has it paired with cropped skinny strap top and I like that they're also cuffed for a little bit of a capri moment. This one is also creatively cute. We're getting another oversized hat just to complement the silhouette, but there's also some gloves and that mirrors the longer socks really nicely as well. The items initially feel a little not cohesive, but she just pulls those kinds of things together. This is another top fave. I guess this rounds out the top three. It's just so skinny and cute. Also love that we're getting a different colored boot, but we're still getting that skinny skinny jean silhouette. Clearly we see that oversized floppy hats are her vibe and part of her aesthetic. And I like that this feels a little more rugged with a different style boot. A good example of how some nuances in the accessories can make this feel new. Another kind of sporty varsity moment. I think the Letterman jacket is really a cool laid back vibe for her but also coordinates well with the boots. Pink and green are complementary colors to an extent, but also this is just giving some debonair, androgynous vibes as well. So sophisticated and a nice refreshing elevated high fashion look for her. While this one still keeps in line with the groovy vibes, just with more of a mature, refined twist. It looks cozy and artsy. I just love the color palette as well. And we're getting a bit more of a print in the pants, which just gives a nice Nice little subtle punch of personality. I chose this one because it's also kind of like a cute little sporty moment just with like the base, what looks like a baseball tee. I love this one for her. A nice little brighter, semi hotter tone of pink just to give us some nice refreshing pop of color for her aesthetic. And the boots are still good because they're rooted in a richer color. So we're still getting some balance. Construction couture and she could so pull it off. And I like that there's really 
thin slivers of body so a little bit of the midriff and just some of the arms because the gloves are so long and the skirt is high-waisted loving it this one's kind of more of like a gothy sporty look which i feel like she could definitely dabble much more in this without compromising the foundation of her aesthetic but still play with maybe within different genres of style and fashion obviously love this i've said many times how i like kind of a cropped shirt short short and boot moment and then of course we have a nice oversized jacket just to contrast and complement all of that this one pretty much feels like one of my top favorite outfits of hers where she had that big oversized sun hat but just in marshmallow mode so a little more soft cute and bubbly love this one this is princess bubblegum sweater but it's a nice oversized top sweater moment once again, which I think really suits her. It's a nice pop of color, but we have those black stockings or boots or whatever else is going on there just to balance that out. And finally, love this look. So rock star, so her with, again, incorporation of some different colors. Love that alien tee. And I think the black stockings really allow those boots to thrive within this look. That was a nice look at Marceline. Now let's shift over to Princess Bubblegum. And if you couldn't tell by my outfit, I'm a bit biased towards her because I like those bright pink fun looks and aesthetics. But character wise, Princess Bubblegum isn't just sunshine and rainbows. In fact, I've seen her get some flack for being a bit morally ambiguous. But I mean, she's a dedicated, intelligent and focused queen. She obviously cares about others and especially those within her kingdom. But she She's gonna do what she's gotta do to protect her kingdom and cover off on her objectives. I think that she's overall a cool character, maybe not always making the best decisions, but I think that she is able to show some great duality in her character. And so when we look at her kind of fashion and style and vibe, it shouldn't be surprising that we're getting plenty of bright, poppy pastel colors, but she is not limited to just gowns. And I liken her to Princess Peach in this regard because there is a set kind of structure and overall royal format in which Princess Bubblegum will stay like a lane that they won't really deviate too much far from, but that doesn't limit them from being able to explore, experiment, and try out different aesthetics, which is why I wanted to save Princess Bubblegum for last, because I feel like we get some really great looks that I think people must have gotten some amnesia on, because they're always referencing Marceline, but Princess Bubblegum is coming in mean with some great looks. So let's jump into those, starting with her signature look, which is really just this deep magenta-ish pink gown with some purple elements. This reminds me of Princess Peach's signature dress, and we will see some variations of this core dress in like different colors with different patterns. But that doesn't mean the gowns are always these long, flat gowns. We're getting some interesting, fun silhouettes with some bell shapes like this. I think the white is a nice break since she has all that pink hair, a pink dress. I mean, it all kind of becomes a little flat and in some regards, but the white with the purple definitely helps break some of that up. This is a cute version because it's just like a cupcake. It's very couture and this is something that a lot of high fashion brands play around with on runways. It's just something that's a little out of the box but within the format and structure of some typical gown wear. Love this for a quick, easy, casual moment. A cute little print, some shorts. This one's a space suit, and, but it's still kind of chic and fashion. I just like um, the EXO elements. I just like some of the blue elements across it. It just kind of gives Xenon. I like when she has her hair like this, and I feel like that hairstyle is reflected really quite well in some of the more ruffle, wavy elements of the sleeves and the bottom of the dress. And I love the overall color of it too. This is a cute little ballerina moment. I do think blue dresses are a really good pop against her overall pink aesthetic. Love the sweater, love a yellow handbag, just love the accessorizing. This is a good example of kind of within the framework of her usual dress archetype but just with some different pattern and color. Love this one because we're just getting a little bit of a strapless, shoulderless moment. But she can put on a hoodie. She can be laid back. She can be down to earth. 
but don't play with it because she will dress it up and make it luxurious just like that. She's a princess. I like this one because it's really just pants. This is also giving Princess Peach where it's like, now we're getting into some pants, maybe some different framework, but it still follows that color scheme and somewhat of that structure. This one kind of reminds me of LSP a little bit, just with it being a bit more bunchy and clumpy but I think it still shows some range and silhouette and I like the color. Definitely a top fave. I just think that this is a nice dress format and structure for her. I think that she should kind of stick to some of this. Love the little sweater or hoodie cardigan situation going on and just that we're getting some taller boots to coordinate with that. This one's cute and fancy just because we're getting some pearls, a mask, and also just more body confidence in the upper body. Again, we're still within the framework of her personal uniform, but we're playing with some length and some different kind of elements like the ruffles just to give it some more personality and some differentiation. Almost skipped this one, but I just really think that the color play here is nicely done, especially for range within a uniform. Obviously love this, super cute, more range, great coordination with the fur for the boots and the hood. Love this, kind of giving some stylized, ancient desert time period moment. Not always the biggest fan of gladiator sandals, but I just think for the overall vibe and aesthetic that this is going for, she's pulling it off. I didn't want to include too many of the lab coat outfits, even though kind of being smart and scientific is true to her character. This one is cute because there's like a purple sweater underneath that peeks through at the top and at the sleeves and the cuffs, so I think that's really nice. This is also another lab coat moment that follows more of the silhouette that I was mentioning. Just a bit more of a shorter cut with some more roundedness, and then we also just get some more tall boots in a purple color this time, which I think is nice. Even though this one is just a cyber suit, I feel like it's just like fashion. So like cyber suit would make it fashion. Of course, Princess Bubblegum would do that. Obviously love this. We have a little bit of asymmetry with how it's fastened. Such a subtle detail with just these little pink buttons just to kind of tell her that's the situation. And the rest of it's kind of whatever, but I just really like the top. She's like, Marceline is not the only one who has a little silhouette. Love this jumpsuit. Love the asymmetrical fasten. A nice kind of bag accessory to kind of break up some of that flat pink color. And again, love the tall purple boots. Even though this outfit feels kind of like Xena Warrior Princess, I think it's just a good example of showing, once again, that she can flex in her style to still look fashion, even if it's maybe a bit of a costume. And brown does look good on her, just like it looks good on Princess Peach. I almost passed this one, but I just think it's just such a simple, soft, feminine look for her with the flower and just the overall shape of the dress. Even though these next two are costumes, I just think she pulls it off in a fashion way once again. Loving this kind of more rugged, barbaric look to her still feels pretty royal and diplomatic to me. And then this look is giving Princess Leia Star Wars. I don't know if that was intentional, but it's definitely giving Star Wars but I like it. It's a darker twist to her aesthetic, but still feels luxurious and royal. I really like this just for a simple little pedestrian rugged moment. Another interesting take on a dress for her with a cool pattern and some incorporation of newer colors. This one's so dramatic and I would have liked to see maybe more looks dabble within a more dramatic over the top flowy fabric design. It's kind of reminds me of Zelda. So we saw how Marceline wore that sweater of bubble gums. This is almost like she's cosplaying Marceline, but somehow she still pulls it off and makes it her just with the color of the shoes in the tank. Corporate baddie bubble gum. I'm loving the kind of power suit essence or vibe from this one and the color choice is excellent. Top favorite look right here, that dress silhouette, I said it before and I'll say it again, is it for her. But this one has a little more pleat. Again, some tall purple boots, love it. I like this one for another casual outfit because it's just very cozy, extra laid back, doesn't have to try very hard, but the color choice is good for her. I think this is a nice contrast to the overalls outfit that Marceline had. This one feels cuter, also a little more covered up, but also just like kind of love the shoulderless moment too. 
This look is also very Marceline, but still feels feminine despite how rugged it is. And even with the incorporation of a hat, it still feels bubblegum. I think Marceline wore the sweater better, but this is also a nice different change in color palette and some items for bubblegum. Love this. We're getting some cultural infusion into the design much more elaborate than what we typically get from her other dresses. Definitely doesn't feel flat, feels nicely decorated and colored. Another top favorite, this is just bodybuilder bubblegum. Like, I don't know what this is, but she just looks more built, more solid. Loving the silhouette and structure of the clothes. Love the boots, love the sweater and the scarf around the neck. Coming through with another chic corporate moment, loving the red on her. This is just asserting more of that authority and power. Love this look, a subtle change to the hair, which I honestly think makes a difference here. Loving the purple color of the dress and just once again a different silhouette just with the bell of the skirt and some slightly different colored boots which just rounds us out perfectly. Another nice new silhouette purple outside of pink is obviously her color. Just really love the whole thing especially the tall boots. This is kind of similar to that red power suit a bit more flat and just gives a different vibe not as strong but it's still a nice look within Princess Bubblegum's repertoire. I like this one too, another pedestrian moment, but I like the shirt especially. Interesting almost texture and pattern as well. It works. This is also another cute overalls moment. Loving purple's her color, but the yellow shirt is a nice contrast to that purple and just brings more life and energy to the look. Having reviewed their favorite looks, I do want to quickly touch on some of their style expansion within subsequent media following the conclusion of the main series. Within the spinoff shows, Marceline's style has definitely continued on a more, I would say experimental, but even in some regards flamboyant direction. Within Fiona and Cake, she is, there's at least two costumes that are like, whoa and I think are much more elaborate than what we've ever seen her in, and also play up certain colors that might be a bit more bold than what she usually dabbles in. Either way, I feel like we're breaking out of some of that muted territory that the majority of her outfits had within the main series, and we're getting a bit more playful, a bit more personality. And then as far as bubblegum, I don't know how prominent Marceline is in the comics, but with regard to this wiki that I found, thank the Lord, by the way, she's getting spoiled within the comics like we're getting so much diversity in princess bubblegum style whether it's costumes day-to-day -day outfits we still get some of that personal uniform that is true to her character but there just seems to be a bit more playfulness and fun within the full scope and range of style that she's able to embody and branch into Thanks for going on that adventure with me, exploring some interesting views of fashion and style with regard to the Adventure Time series and cast of characters. What did you think about my top outfit selections for Marceline and Bubblegum? I think there's more we could probably unpack with from an Adventure Time perspective, maybe in subsequent videos, looking at other characters, checking on some more vibes. I don't know, you tell me, but until the next video, I'll talk to you later.